<laughs> All right, so I've got the camera gear in, bikes in the back, and I'm off to Jubilee Mountain Bike Park to meet Terry. Terry's a cycling and fitness coach. So hopefully he can give me a hand on improving some of my skills for mountain biking. Let's get some fuel first before I run out. Meet Terry Martin, he is a mountain bike and fitness coach, uh, and let's get to know him a little bit better. I've got some rapid fire questions for Terry. All right, first up, what's your favorite color? Probably pink, actually. Pink, all right, didn't pick that. Have you broken any bones? No, I haven't. A mountain biker who hasn't broken bones? No, nope. I've had many CT scans where they thought I've broken bones, but I've never broken one. Wow, yeah. okay, this is a skills coach we need. <laughs> right, Terry, what's your favorite uh, bike? Uh, my favourite bike at the moment has to be my Enduro, actually. Alright, so. what would be your all-time favourite bike? If money was no option. Money no option? I would have a Zero Teniwa. So it's a gearbox mountain bike. Nice, yeah, okay. That's the future. <laughs> What's your next bike adventure? My next bike adventure is actually riding from Toowoomba to Stanthorpe and back again. Ooh, nice. Yeah. So how many k's is that? Um, the route I have, I'm going towards Kalani and doing 200 k's both ways. Serious. Can you explain the inner workings of the hyperdrive? Don't think, off the top of my head, no, sorry. Give me a night to sort of study. Do you race mountain bikes? Yeah, yep. I dabble in it, I enjoy doing it. All right, Terry, does shaving your legs make you go faster? No, it does, most certainly not, no. How long have you been riding bikes for? I've only been riding bikes since oh, mid-2015. Okay. What did you have for breakfast this morning? This morning's breakfast was wheat bix. Wheat bix and more wheat bix and a lot of coffee. coffee. Can you play a musical instrument? Yes, that's probably my main hobby other than cycling. Oh, okay. What yeah. instrument? Uh, both guitar, piano and drums. Oh. But mainly guitar. Cool. Okay, Terry, last question. Would you shave the do for five bucks? No. 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 All right. It's not going to happen. 50? No. 500? No. Oh, is there a limit? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Just, oh, we don't know what it is yet. Uh, it's a million. Okay. <laughs> it's, that's, you know what it is. It's a million. How are you, Josie? Ready for some skills? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, go. Give me your top ten tips. I don't even know if there's ten tips for riding berms, but I know there's a couple. Yeah. Um, the best advice I have for most new people mm -hmm. is most people look right in front of their front wheel. Yeah. We don't want to be doing that. I want you to keep your eyes up, looking through the berm, not just looking at the berm. Mm -hmm. So looking through the berm, I say like a five meter rule sort of thing is my okay. kind of eyes up looking ahead and as long as you're doing that your bike is going to follow your eye line to a certain extent like look where you want to go <laughs> next thing with cornering in general not just berms but it does really matter in berms because you're usually going to be turning 180 degrees is weight now you want to position your weight very central on the bike but also getting low is as important as that so getting low is going to push your bike into the ground give yourself more grip give yourself more confidence with a berm, it's going to be one fluid motion, not three or four you know, sort of turns. You break it down into one symmetrical corner, and so you want to be treating it as smooth as possible and rolling around it. So with that, it's key to come in to the berm and try to enter as high as possible, or in most cases as high as possible, and then treat it as one fluid motion of dropping your arm and dropping your hip and leaning the bike into the corner and getting around it. You don't want to be exiting too tight because it's going to lose your speed. You want to have a nice flow on the exit and be able to let go of your brakes and roll into that next straight. <laughs> We're trying to explain it to a caveman. I always think that if, if it's a problem in your life, can you explain it to a caveman? If you can, then it's an actual problem. If you can't, then, then it's, just, it's just you being a millennial. 
That's what I tell my friends, basically. Okay. Oh, my Instagram doesn't work. Explain that to a caveman. It's not an actual problem. Anyway, okay. I, digress. Good point. I digress. Yeah, good point. <laughs> that's, just, that's just me. How old um, are you? Just turned 21. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. That was really cool. People like to just go straight to the jump. They don't really learn those techniques first. And that's why I teach a lot of people on flat pedals. Because with clips you can get really lazy and sort of just pull the bike with your feet. Yeah. So flat mm. pedals kind of teach you how to do it without mm. relying on your foot to pull the bike up. Yeah. Down and back to lift. Ooh. Down and back with body weight. And so what that does is throwing your weight down and back. You see what it's doing? Yeah, lifting. Yeah. That's exactly what it's doing. You're not using your arms. You're using that core and that backwards okay. mm. down and back motion to lift and then with a bunny hop or like American bunny hop bunny hop you're doing that and then using your kind of your hips to drive the rear end up also mm. when you come back up you drive your hips up bike hops up do the same thing off a jump gets you to go really high up in the sky so yeah that's the three that's the sort of progression a lot of people just go straight to jumps Mm. and they fail. Mm. <laughs> they usually fail. So, coach really needs to explain terminology to us so we can sound more pro. So, Terry, can you explain pedal strike? Pedal strike is where generally you'll be climbing a hill or just you know, going even down a hill and chucking some pedals and then the dreaded hit on a rock and your foot slides off its pedal even if you're clipped in usually and it's bad news from there. Enduro. Enduro is a form of mountain biking where it's a mountain bike racing that you pedal yourself to the top of a hill and you're timed racing down stages that vary in length and vary in steepness, but you have to ride your bike between them. Uh, berm? A berm is a corner that is banked up, so the camber holds you into the corner and usually it's going to be a 180 degree corner for the most part, but... 90 degree corners, anything with camber that holds you into a corner. Dropping in? Dropping in is something that mostly free riders do. <laughs> Dropping in, but um, it's what you do. You're at, the, you're at the trail, like the head of the trail, and then you're going into the downhill with your buddies and you just yell out, you're dropping into the trail. Cool. Very Everyone well. knows that you're dropping in. <laughs> dropping in. Hey, can you tell us what dope is? Dope is something Lance Armstrong used. Cut that. <laughs> <laughs> Very bad. Uh, Very bad. Throw, I had to throw the Lance yeah. quote in at some point during this whole thing. Um, dope is when you see your mate do a huge whip or he just does a big skid, whatever, and you just tell him that was, that was dope. All right. It's something old people say these days, I think, though. Oh, so, burn. Young people say yeet. Yeet. Okay. Yeet. We're learning Yeet. so much. Wow, oh my gosh. <laughs> right, I think I need to learn this one. What's a bail? <laughs> bail is when you you know something's going to go really wrong <laughs> and you can see it coming from seconds away and you're like, I'm out of here. <laughs> just you, get, you check out of that situation and just leave the bike alone. And, cool. Yeah, that might come in handy. Yes. Top and roll. <laughs> Granny gear. Granny gear is what I've got on my bike. 50 tooth, chain ring, chuck it in that bad boy and get up any hill. Wow. If you ever want to ride your bike slower than you can walk, <laughs> use your granny gear. It's, it's... I use it all the time. <laughs> Good. What's a skinny? Skinny is a North Shore feature that is very, very narrow, very easy to fall off, and is just amazing. So just like imagine a little two by four and ride along it. The last one I've got for our uh, terminology, talking like a pro, is shred. Shred. You shred the gnar. That's what you do. You shred the gnar. You're doing cutties and just, oh, well, I guess I should explain what the cutty is. Yeah, when, you, when you go into a corner, you just kind of inside a little bit and then skid into it and sort of make that little, little cloud of dust. Nice. Skid into it and that's sort of like what I would say it would be. That's when you get all the pro photos and the video yeah. footage, the slow motion. Yeah, yep. the right. photographer getting covered in just dirt and <laughs> dust and bad things. A trail is designed so it has a lot of flow when going a certain pace, I guess. Um, 
it's a very hard one, of course, for beginners um, to get that kind of flow. Mm. And that's why beginners uh, struggle on more, you know, more technical terrain and a bit more terrain with rocks, where you've got to kind of be able to carry the speed over rocks. It's very daunting. Um, so, and then when you throw a beginner into a trail they're maybe not ready for, and they don't have that ability to carry sort of the momentum needed, it just makes life a lot more difficult. The more pace you get, the easier trails kind of become. But line choice and learning line choice from the start and learning where kind of you should be positioning your bike helps out tremendously. And you gotta break it down into you know what's happening after that corner and what's happening after you do something on a straight. These straights are hard even. You gotta you gotta look at the trail as a whole, not just one little section. You, know, you look at sections individually, but then you, you go, how does this section link into the next one? No, like maybe the fastest way through section one. Maybe that doesn't set me up for section two. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe if you take a different line in section one and carry momentum into section two, you're gonna be faster into section three. So you kind of look at it in that regard. You break it down and look at it as a whole, not just individual. All right, so I just car. <laughs> just oh. wanted to say there's a car. <laughs> yep, there it is. There it goes. Pay attention, back is straight. <laughs> Okay. Is your hair good? Is it? <laughs> can't tell. It's never good. I don't think we're going to avoid cars, but uh, I just wanted to say uh, thanks to Terry for showing us a few skills today. Uh, no I think worries. I'm feeling a lot better uh, not... doing manuals. <laughs> I stepped into the well, You're showing us what, uh, what, not, what to not to do. do. Yeah, yeah. Yep, so. yeah. But uh, no, it all comes with experience, doesn't it? It does. And I really, it really, really does. does. Cool. So yeah. uh, no, we did what? Manuals. We did some um, berms. berms. You show us uh, some skills in the berms. Yeah. Cool. And um, yeah. and then we just went for a bit of a free ride, which is cool. Okay, Terry. And if people want to uh, get more coaching from you, how can they contact you? Um, you can go to my Facebook page, um, Terry Martin Mountain Bike Coaching on Facebook, or come in and see me in the shop. I work down at Bike Line in sales and repairs. So we've got cards down there for myself. I've got all my contact numbers on that. Um, I'm sure we can link it in the video too. All right. Put all my contacts in. Thanks for the leaf blower going off in the background too. It's great. It's just, fantastic. it's just what I needed. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's good background noise. All right. Thanks again, Terry. Thanks, no Josie. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. All right. Catch us next time.